So the musical uh, musical chairs continues here, Will. Yeah. And uh, round and round we go. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it gets better or worse every time. I suppose we're about to find out. <laughs> yeah, I think you got the short straw today. Yeah. This, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, the artist formerly known as Jack. There he is. It's a real pleasure. This is the guy who was hiding from the internet for, I don't know, a decade. And nowadays he's screaming and yelling, saying, where's the camera? Put me in front of it. Yeah, it's a real 180 there. Show me the camera lens. I'm ready. Yeah. Took 10 years. And so that's what you got today, ladies and gentlemen. You got Jack, you got all of them. Not some of them, you got all of them. I'm honored. I, a lot of, many a great men have sat in this chair, so uh, it's a privilege. Go ahead, Jack. Uh, that's all I got. Right <laughs> Other exciting news, Jack decided to bring his very own wild card round in mm-hmm. order to show up Willie Do, who's been slacking on that aspect. So Jack has the last story of the day, so you're not going to want to leave because uh, he didn't tell me what, what it is, but he gave a little preamble that uh, it's going to steal the show. And so that's coming up uh-huh. very soon in the future. First, we got to get through the news, of course. And a headline here, a little comparison between that brand new iMac, the super thin, ridiculous, ridiculously thin iMac, and the previous generation iMac, which seems so antiquated now, uh, the Intel iMac. And so this little comparison, actually, yeah, there's a few interesting things in there that you may not have considered. Obviously, the new one, faster, better, stronger, Daft Punk. Yep, just going to say that. Uh, but you're giving up a couple of things that you may currently be using and just not necessarily fully considered. Obviously, when you move to the M1 stuff, you're giving up your traditional ports. So all those USB-A ports those babies are gone uh you're going to an ssd which of course uh yeah obviously you're doing that but interestingly enough uh you can go up to two terabytes on the m1 imac wait is this right eight terabyte ssd could you get that on a 5k imac i'm looking at his chart right now and i'm very skeptical what was the max storage for ssd on the 27-inch 5K iMac. Or can you even look at it anymore? Hmm. This is going to require some more creative Google moves, possibly. Oh, no, there it is. Technical specs. Great. Oh, and tech specs? You found it, Will. I'm so happy. Yeah, you got to go down to storage. Uh Oh, my God. Yeah, you could get an 8-terabyte SSD. That's interesting. That would have cost a billion dollars on the old model. But anyway, it was there. <laughs> this new one, they don't even bother with that madness. 2-terabyte SSD. Uh, the other thing to mention is that even though this has a, 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 a really high-resolution display, you could get a true 5K iMac. Even though it was 27 inches, it did exist. Mm. If you wanted 5K now, we have this, like, 4.5K display but again i'm not look i'm not complaining here it's 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 a it's an ipad on a stick and it's a whole computer did you see this thing jack yeah i did i just was reminded of that old picture of uh like from way back in the day those guys loading that like 12 megabytes onto the back of a truck yeah and to think that you can get eight terabytes right now on something like that yeah i mean just yeah just what a computer used to be versus what it is today show jack the profile image of the new imac just make sure he's fully absorbed how thin it is. I mean, that's the computer, Jack. That's wild. You're editing on there. What's your guy's favorite color? Uh, this has been all over the map. Will claims he's getting the blue one, uh, which is actually the one I believe I've ordered or will order. It's like a it's like a dark blue. Um, the green on the far left is kind of cool, a coolish green. Mm. Yeah, I don't mind that one. Red is going to be a tough one to call. And yellow and orange. I don't know. Not for me. What about you? I think the green. The first one? Yeah. Yeah. I noticed something else weird about it. If you go to view pricing, what you'll see is that depending on the spec that you select, you can't get every color in every spec. It's very strange. So there's only four colors. Like, 
they're trying to punish you here for not ponying up the extra money. Yeah. They're like, oh, you want yellow? You need a few hundred, few few hundred more dollars over here. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, these things are crazy powerful. Uh, uh, as far as expandability, as I mentioned, you're giving up uh, some of those traditional, typical ports because now it's just like the MacBook and everything else. It's just uh, four USB Type C ports, two of them Thunderbolt four, obviously. There's other things we're going to have to figure out when we when we test this out, but presumably if it's anything like the other M1 stuff, it's going to breeze through the variety of daily activities, including whatever it is that uh, you guys do on a daily basis. So, um, But yeah, th there's a few specs that are just a little bit... Um, like, I, like I think the 24-inch size, they no longer have a big iMac. You know, it's mm -hmm. in between the two kind of a surprise mm -hmm. but they're going after you know very specific market i'm sure they know what they're doing they're apple apple has sold a few things over the years mm -hmm. something i learned a couple trillions doing his job something i learned yeah they sold enough of their stuff to me bought a hundred iphones the other day for that <laughs> <laughs> i was still settling up on his shipping charge for that thing you don't even want to see the shipping charge on that thing Still settling up. Yeah, you're their best customer. Holy cow, maybe. Yeah, as far as a single individual, I don't know about that. Gave them a trillion dollars. Hard to say, yeah. I'm responsible for all of it. Mm -hmm. Today's sponsor is Clear. Uh, fly safer and easier with Clear. Secure identity platform lets you use just your face or eyes to move quickly and effortlessly through security at over 50 plus airports, stadiums, concert halls, and other venues nationwide. With Clear, all you need is you to open up a world of frictionless experience. I'm not a big friction guy. Well, I prefer to be frictionless, mm. smooth. I sail right through whenever possible. VIP? Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. But uh, experience a faster, effortless way. Yes. It's uh, over 5 million people who are already using Clear. For seamless experiences. Once you become a member, you can use Clear across our network of including airports, of our network, which includes airports, stadiums, arenas, concert spaces, offices, restaurants, and more. So that's kind of cool. Clear members can add up to three friends or family members uh, to their account for a discounted rate of only $50 each per year. Plus, kids under 18 can tag along for free. Doesn't say anything about your pets, though, guys. Mm. <laughs> um this is one of those things that like came true as like a promise from when you were a kid absolutely mm -hmm. that the science fiction stuff yeah when you saw in those old 80s movies that mm -hmm. is actually real now that's true clear is the absolute best way to help you get back to what you love because you know people have been having trouble with the traveling and all that lately mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you get back to what you love you used to travel yeah, well, yeah. You were in Hawaii every five minutes the other day. <laughs> prior, other to, prior, day. <laughs> prior to all this stuff going down, which actually yeah. is like feels like 10 years ago at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you're on a beach, guy Listen, like you. I, I highly recommend Hawaii if you've never been. It's worth it. Uh, any, spe yeah. any specific spots? Uh, I liked uh, Oahu. That was my favorite island. Uh, that's Jack for you. Yeah. Uh, but, but we used to travel a lot too. No, not me. You got the wrong guy. Okay. No, you're right. I got to get back to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the whole world's going to come back to it. Right now, for a limited time, you can get your first two months of Clear for free. Go to clearme.com slash later and use code later. That's C-L-E-A-R-M-E dot com slash later. Code later for your first two months of Clear free. Clearme.com slash later and the code later. Don't forget the code. That saves you the cash. And uh, it will, of course, it lets them know that we sent you check out the website i mean it's really amazing stuff that, that's cool. a no that's a no-brainer to me imagine you're on a first date and you're you're impressing your, your <laughs> lady friend they scan your eyeballs and they let you in that's right you just uh, breeze right through there yeah how about that guy wow. like you futuristic man jack wow on his way to hawaii smooth all right now the one other thing i want to mention here about uh the imac it has a the magsafe came back which is the magnetic charge port mm -hmm. we've all had experience with this However, it feels a little bit weird on the iMac, and it's, it's you know, they're taking a, a little bit of heat. Apple, every time they announce something, it's the two waves. Everyone says it's the greatest thing that's ever 
existed. And then you got the people on the other side that say, here we go again. Hmm. So they put a magnetic connector on here, but yet it's not quite like a laptop where you're likely to trip over it. So you're wondering why do you need a magnetic connector here? And then the other piece of it is uh, there's some criticism that here we go with another proprietary cable. Uh. If anything happens to this cable, I'm going to pay uh, 2000 bucks to replace the cable, which is color matched, by the way, to the actual computer. However, there is some functionality there, which I skipped over the last time I was talking about it. They were able to put the Ethernet jack into the power brick, which sits on the floor. So as to limit mm. the number of cables going up to the actual unit. And then that singular cable connecting through a magnet uh, carries both power and Ethernet if you need to use a wired connection. And so let me just say, they made these things so colorful. We imagine people putting these things in unusual locations, maybe in kitchens, maybe at the front of businesses. And so may maybe this uh, magnet thing is not so dumb. I don't know. Well, you're a big fan of magnets. Well, I mean, yeah, I love oh. them everywhere. I'm not going to complain. We don't know what it will take to replace it. I will also say this, Will, if you don't mind. No. We've had so many computers around here and monitors and TVs and, and things like this. When you are trying to repurpose an old device that we have, the worst part is trying to track down the right cables or accessories. Right, yeah. To do it. Now, mm -hmm. we have an unusual scenario because we have so many gadgets and things lying about. But you can imagine years from now, we're trying to hook up you know, the iMac. And so where's that magnetic power cable? Yeah. So I understand what people are saying, but I think for the average person, they're going to be able to manage that cable and they may or may not have the MagSafe experience where somebody, because the dogs, the dogs run like crazy around these cables. Mm -hmm. It's like they, they built this product just for us. Mm -hmm. They already wrecked, actually the microphone you're speaking into, they wrecked the, uh, the audio cable. Hmm. And you got a fresh one right yeah, now. They stepped on it. Which Too many dog times. was the culprit? Which one? I think it's that one back there. Yeah. Marissa? Yeah, no. I think it's that one right there. That oh, was right. a little bit too rowdy as far oh, as I'm man. concerned. That was a little bit too rowdy. She's never harmed a fly. <laughs> she runs away. <laughs> She's later yelling at me. I'm getting out of here. There, 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 there goes that guy again, that loud guy. Yeah. Here goes that guy. Disaster. Well, I think from an aesthetic point of view, too, like the cables, there's nothing uglier than just a bunch of cables coming out of stuff. Brutal. And the less you can have, the better. Is there any signal loss there at all? Going up the power cable? Mm -hmm. Um, very minimal i mean they use uh there's power line uh, ethernet adapters which actually will use the power lines in your house mm -hmm. to send that signal so, uh, as long as it's not as long as you have a singular ethernet s signal it's not competing it'll be fine, You're fine. yeah cool. it'll be good and uh so anyway yeah they tighten it up and look the thing is so thin and it's it's it, like jack said it's all about the aesthetic with this mm -hmm. so they're gonna do whatever it takes to uh, to keep that going and limit the ugliness of cables going up to it. AirTag talk. Uh, they scratch. I mean, I don't know. Is anyone surprised? I, I guess, well, actually, based on your facial expression, Jack, you're upset. Well, again, I think back to the aesthetic thing with Apple. Like, that's what they really have going for them. And if you show up with something like that and you're trying to be the cool new guy with the new gadget, mm -hmm. like that doesn't mm -hmm. look cool and new to me. Mm -hmm. That looks, uh, I don't know. That that's Wow. It's really know. got to you. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be proud to be like, hey guys, check this out. I'd, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, we were working on, with later case, we were working on a little thin case for this thing. Uh, you can see it. It's up on the website. Now, I have my concerns even with this, like having this product over here, because I'm curious that the back of that thing is so uh, susceptible to scratches with that polished look. Like, I, I don't know even sliding it in and out. I don't have the part yet. Mm. I'll have it very soon. I'm going to test it out and see how it goes. But certainly once you have it in some sort of protection, it it would will not get scratched. But what about just even going in and out? Yeah. It's so soft, right? And we, we've already run this test because old iPods had this polished back on them and, and they always ended up crazy scratched. But my feeling is with this product, 
as much as uh, you're right about being a cool guy, having the latest thing, this product is meant to be a little more covert. It exists on your keychain in your backpack, inside of a keychain holder. They're sell, they'll sell you a billion of those. Mm-hmm. They'll sell you the Hermes uh, three four hundred dollar yeah keychain, which I know that's the one you're gonna go for, Jack. Show Jack that one because he's gonna have to put in an order real quick here. There's like a ooh, specific ooh, link for it. Oh wow! Looking are are you looking for Hermes? Wow. Is that what you're looking for? These are because uh, here's our link for it. Here. Let me just convert it to US USD. What do you say, Jack? Four, it, four fifty for the luggage tag. But you get a free air tag. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then. No, the air tag is twenty nine. So you. What's well, included in the Hermes uh, case, right? I know. So, <laughs> so track twenty nine, if you like, is a four hundred dollar. Sure. <laughs> it's a four hundred dollar. You know. But you're still susceptible to scratches there, right? Like you're not. Yeah, a, that's what I said. It's there's no plastic on the case. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's bare. Let me tell you something. Yeah. You got that Hermes money? You don't care? That's right. Or you have so many that That's right, Jack. Scratch, you just get another one. That's right. Yeah. Just to let you know about that Hermes money. <laughs> what is that, leather? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fake. Yeah. Oh, leather. Yeah. Well, I actually ordered this, by the way. Did you? Yeah, just for the Unbox Therapy video. I think it'll be a great time. It's just hard. To, I think when you have these luxury brand technology crossovers because you know people who are into technology like to act like the things they get are not luxury like oh they're necessary they're good i need this in my life this serves a purpose which it does but it also th why do they make them so shiny and good looking if that didn't matter mm -hmm. so but this crossover always gets people irate because they're like how dare you pay that much for a slab of leather or a purse or whatever it happens to be NFTs are a perfect example of people just spending money on nothing, really. So. Oh, too bad we don't have Vin here for this one. Yeah. He's got a lot to say about that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this one. This next one is kind of interesting. It seems as though Apple is embracing third parties for gaming on the Apple TV. So previously, they were trying to say, you're going to game on the Apple TV with that little remote. It had an accelerometer and gyroscope, and you were like, you could play like driving games with the tiny slim remote, which I've been critical of in the past. And it had its it had its attributes, but they fixed it. Like this is definitely going to be better. This remote, but one thing that happened here with this new remote, they got rid of those control schemes. They got rid of those sensors. So whatever oh. games you were playing that may have utilized that functionality, you're not playing those games anymore. Why would they do that? You wonder why they did that? Why? Anyone want to speculate? They're, well, I guess they're making a controller. Mm. Actually, no. I'm about to blow your mind. They're, embra oh. they're embracing the other controllers. They want you to use. Oh. I mean, there's rumors that they're working on their own controller, but in the meantime, and this is very uh, new age Apple. So you can use a Xbox controller? PlayStation. Let's see. Let me just make sure what it says here. TVOS now supports Xbox and PlayStation controllers. It seems that Apple wants to encourage users who like to play games on the Apple TV to have a better gaming experience with a joystick instead of the Siri remote. Hmm. Are you surprised Apple embraces Sony and Microsoft over here? Embrace? Well, they're uh, letting you use the controller yeah, on that thing. Uh, I think for now. Uh, I think they're going to make their own controller. Sure, but in the yeah. meantime, if people pick up those controls, because they're trying to also push gaming, they're, yeah. they're curious yeah, yeah. about gaming. Yeah, this kind of bridges the gap. Yeah, it's at getting least their, for now. Their foot in the door. But I don't know if anyone's going to be upset that uh, I don't know what titles, what games. the 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 game that I play on Apple TV is you're you you are a crab, and you are, you're a baseball. Yeah. You're a crab that plays baseball. Makes sense. And except the baseballs are beach balls. Hmm. And you have to swing, you, like almost like Nintendo Wii. You swing the controller to hit the baseball. It, a beach ball, though, is easy to hit, no? Like, are you ever missing? So in the game, it's not just about hitting. What's it called? Uh, What's crab, it called? 
crab baseball. No, you're not going to get it with crab baseball, man. You gotta, you're going to have to type Apple TV game baseball. This is how you Google. Out of the park? No, Mr. Crab Mr. Baseball. Crab. There you go. Check this out. Check it out, man. You don't believe me. Look at this guy. And it's not, by the way, it's not just beach balls. It's different items. Sometimes it's like an egg. And then sometimes it's something you're not supposed to hit. You're supposed to protect. And then you have to pull out your net and catch it. You have also like a fishing net. Oh, Are crabs in right now? What's the deal with crabs? Crabs are always in. They never left. They never left. Mr. Crab Baseball is created exclusively for the Apple TV. Use the Apple TV remote to swing the bat and control the net. When Mr. Crab's not busy saving lost baby crabs in towers around the world, he keeps his legs and claws in shape and on the ground by practicing baseball. What a crazy crossover. Who saw it coming? Fun. And if you swing it the right way in the right time and with the right velocity, because it's the sensors are determining what you're doing, then you get more point. Mm -mm. Anyway, you can't play it on the new one. So that's gone. You shed a tear. Oh, that's a shame. Go it sounds a intriguing. You go shed a tear. All right, sticking with gaming here, uh, we have a, an article from Sam Rutherford on Gizmodo. He says, the time has come for an Xbox laptop. I feel like Willie Do has, a, has some feelings on this. I think it's about time. Why not? You talked to Sam Rutherford before this? Yeah, we homies. I e did. Easy. <laughs> I overheard that conversation. Easy. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I guess you got all this stuff going on with uh, Microsoft's cloud gaming. Microsoft is already on your laptop. There's tons of gaming laptops out there. They yeah. just bought a soft, uh, gaming uh, game software company. Bethesda. And yeah. Kind of makes sense. They make hardware like they put together they put their brand on hardware that sits under your tv why don't they have the surface laptops why don't they have a gaming laptop mm -hmm. do they talk about the specs is it a nice laptop they're not actually doing it this is sam rutherford saying it's about time they do i, see. Uh, I don't know that he has any Perfect. intel here that they're actually going to do it let's see here no he's making the pitch to you that this is a thing that should take place I don't think he has any inside information. Here we go. Why not a Surface gaming laptop? There are several factors that make a gaming laptop from Microsoft fit better under the Xbox umbrella than as an addition to Microsoft's existing Surface laptop lineup. So this the conversation here is around branding. Xbox is synonymous with gaming, and therefore maybe you don't have a Surface gaming laptop, but it's just called Xbox laptop. Right. Or it could be an Xbox lineup of gaming laptops. I don't know how, how they would do it, but I think it's an interesting, it's a reasonable suggestion. Mm -hmm. If you have one of these, though, you're saying to the world that you're like a major gamer. Like that's your sole yeah. purpose on this thing. In life. Because if you took that into a coffee shop, like you're, you know, red flags, I'm Mr. Gamer in here. There, There's brands that have been very successful with exactly that, like Razer. Yeah, like they... They managed to make laptops that are for productivity too. But but they embrace it. It's almost like yeah. the thing Jack just said, it is exactly that. It's a they want people to know that this is their interest. Right. They're not trying to hide it. They're out there, they're out there and they're proud. It's a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now you're starting to get it. Mm. So I don't know if Microsoft will do it. If they if they are, it's going to take some time, obviously. But I'll say, man, the gaming laptop marketplace is on fire because it's so many brands putting out compelling stuff, competitive stuff, and and one thing that has been certain about this COVID situation is that people have uh, reignited their love of gaming, and people are gaming all over the place. It's one segment that has gone. To the moon, as they say. Yes. Gaming. And streaming. Maybe even Jack going to play a video game. I don't know. Yeah. Let's not go nuts. It's possible. All right. Here we have an update to Google Maps that apparently will no longer give you the fastest route by default, which seems counterintuitive. You say, that's what, I'm, that's what I need from you, my, 
map application. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Isn't it always funny when you have the the other routes and it says like, you know, the, go, go this route if you want, but it's like 15 minutes slower. Right. Like, why yeah. would you even present that to me? Mm -hmm. That's right. There's like a U-turn around. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, I'm about to I'm about to tell you why, Jack. I better be good. I'm about to tell you why. <laughs> a little thing called the environment, Jack. Oh. Yeah, you're yeah, the environment. Okay. All right. That thing that you've been destroying? Hey, I'm doing my part. Yeah, sure, bud. You see that smart car out yeah. there? That's what they all say. It's a great car. That's what they all say. So by default, this is crazy. By default, it will now it will now suggest the most efficient route, not the fastest route. So efi efficient from the standpoint of uh, fuel efficiency. Because your vehicle... Driving at different speeds, like if it happens to be the highway or the freeway or something, is going to be using fuel in a different manner than if it's, even if it's faster to go some other way that you have to do a lot of stop and go, something like this. Mm -hmm. Now, in most cases, I would assume the most efficient route would, would likely line up with the fastest route, but not always. Mm -hmm. And it is important to note that you will be able to select otherwise. The option still exists in here for you to... It's like default the, to the fastest route instead of the most efficient one. The ruin ruin the planet route. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime later this year, Google will push out an update for maps that will no longer show users by default the quickest way between two points. Instead, it will show the most fuel efficient way to get from point A to B. The new algorithm will take into account fuel consumption and focus on how much gas is being spent instead of how much time is being used during an automobile outing. Now, another group that may appreciate something like this would be the delivery drivers, the Uber drivers, mm. things like this, where they're really paying attention to the expenditure, driving a vehicle around, and they may want to default to the most uh, fuel efficient route. What do you guys think about this? Are you okay with this? Or would you, do you want the quickest no matter what? And tell the truth here. No, I, I, I'm okay with this if, if I don't have somewhere to be immediately like if it's a sunday afternoon drive i'm driving out to a park to go for a walk i'll take an extra 10 minutes if it means uh i save a seal somewhere you see that ladies and gentlemen yeah now i believe there's a limit to this how much you will save the planet what if i were to propose to you that the efficient route was 20 minutes longer than the fastest well, okay. <laughs> is, on a five minute drive. I know. Is my drive now? No, your yeah. drive is, you, you got an hour long drive or an hour and 20. It would have to depend on the. Now, this is very unlikely, time. but I just hit you with a philosophy. It's very mm -hmm. unlikely, obviously, that these two things would exist, that yeah. you would be on the road 20 minutes longer and use less fuel. Very unlikely. I think that's right at the, the cusp of the 20 minutes. It's kind of like, okay, maybe that's a little too inconvenient. But again, if it's a Sunday, maybe I got an extra 20 minutes. These are important conversations yeah. because at the end of the day, humans are going to do what they do. And you have meetings inside these companies and they uh, have to figure out what, what the, where the human capacity lives for how much a person is looking to potentially disrupt their day in, 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 the, in exchange for efficiency, let's say in this case. Or the environment in Jack's case, or whatever it is, yes. whatever so happens to be. So there's a lot of different variables. Like, well, if you got an electric car, it's a lot of different variables. Right? Yeah, you wouldn't feel so bad. Uh, you wouldn't Taking need the, to take any of these. Uh, well, you're not dealing with fuel efficiency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Granted, you're still using energy. You're still being less efficient. Mm -hmm. Right? They still. I'm sure that the the math there's still some sort of a an uh, an algorithm. Even if you're electric, it just probably wouldn't be to the same extent. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Jack's saving the planet. What would your cutoff be? Like how many minutes is okay? <laughs> it's definitely not 20, if I'm being honest. 20 is too much. I feel like, what am I driving around town here for? Just uh, doing circles? Yeah, what am I? <laughs> uh, I think 10 minutes. Now, granted, if it was a situation where... I was really uh, one of these types that was really focusing on cost, the cost of things, and it was mm. a frequent commute, mm. and it was a and it was a more efficient ride every day. I was consuming less 
fuel, but taking 10 minutes longer, I think that's it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, it's, it's, it all depends on the specific way that an individual uses the roads. For me, sure. anything over a 10 minute difference, no chance. Fair enough. All right. No chance. YouTube is going to add even more video resolution controls and options on mobile. Um, we're all very familiar with how when you're watching a YouTube video, you can select the resolution on your phone. Uh, videos all the way up to 4K, obviously. By the way, what resolution do you guys watch on your phone if you're out? Oh. Mm. 720? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a good balance. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I'll do 1080. 1080? Yeah. Not very efficient, Jack. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's not a, you think you're doing good. You're, you're uh, enjoying yourself too much. And, <laughs> and you realize not really a saving a seal mentality. Uh, <laughs> I need Jack, to revisit that, obviously. Jack's watching 144p <laughs> Save the Planet. <laughs> <laughs> Just this close to my uh, Well, anyway, I don't know if people wanted more control or if the resolution itself was not uh translated enough to individuals because they added another menu in there video quality preferences so you have even more control or different ways of interacting with the quality of your content so now you can have an automatic mode which will automatically adjust to give you the best experience depending on your current situation your connection and a variety of other variables you can also select higher picture quality which will use more data there's a data saver setting for the lowest picture quality and then you click on advanced to go in and select a specific resolution so i guess the feeling here is that for the average user they don't want to see a number like 1080p or 720p they can just say i want it to look better or i want to save data mm. and kind of uh skip out of the more advanced version of the menu obviously for us i think we're all pretty aware of how video resolution works but youtube wants to be for everyone and give people more tools and control so i suppose that's the motivation mm. to add this advanced feature in here uh oh tesla uh, tesla model s plaid so i picked this story this is a user who um a user a youtuber actually uh drag times who has one on order and obviously received a similar email to the one that I received this morning. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so I ordered this, I mean, immediately after it was announced. And originally the date was March. This March. This past or, March, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're in April. Yeah. And they just said March. And, and uh, that was part of the excitement. It was like, sure, how, yeah. how are you going to deliver that fast? So I was skeptical, to say the least. But anyway, I got an email this morning saying summer, say in July. Mm. and i'm like well if it was march to july i mean july can become september so december yeah exactly it can right i'm not saying that's the case i know it's hard making cars i know they had fires out there in a fremont facility i don't know what's going i know there's a chip shortage going on affecting other automakers i don't know if it affects tesla Is, um, do they have a, a reason or they're just just i'm sorry mm. unfortunately we're delayed that was pretty much the extent of it. And the the drag times guy, same thing. He got a similar message. He ordered right away at the same time. So I presume it's widespread. It ha it's not, because I was like, maybe because I'm in Canada or something, extra delays with that. But uh, you can see here the, the outline or the, um, what would you call that? 10 to 14 weeks, the expectation. Or oh. if that's, oh. you know, no, not the Plaid Plus. Oh. Just the Plaid. Yeah, there you go. 10 to 14 weeks. Okay. Wow, they switched Plaid Plus to what? Plaid Plus is mid-2022. So Maybe it's a marketing ploy to get everyone more excited and anticipate it more. And uh... Well, Tesla has always accepted your money way in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I put money down on a Cybertruck about a billion years ago. Mm -hmm. I know they have a plant. I know they're working on it, but it's... Always, I think that's it's kind of the type, and it's fully refundable. I could just say no thanks, but I did think about, and I'm, I'm guessing there's not too many people that ordered the Plaid model as a car that they really need and don't have another option, and they're like betting on this thing arriving in March. But it's my first taste of Tesla delays, and that maybe you kind of have to 
move your expectations a little bit as far as ordering mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes the anticipation is the best part. Like getting it is. Like, well, to a point. Yeah. When is it too much? A year. Yeah. I would say. I mean, people. Okay. So they had a the Roadster, right? Yeah. And the Roadster program. They were offering the Tesla Roadster as a reward for people who could hit a certain number of referrals. Mm -hmm. So people were rushing to refer people to buy Teslas. And they showed off the Roadster. They brought it to an event. I don't know how many years ago at this point. Yet it doesn't appear to be on a production radar. They got so many other things they got to get out of the way before. But imagine that you had a free Roadster sitting there waiting because you did all these referrals. And you're like, maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. Not a priority for them at all. Yeah. But a very exciting car. Yeah, very cool. And I do agree that there is a time frame to which your excitement just switches to either frustration or indifference. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could just lose excitement altogether at some point. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's part of the gig. It's part of being a new car company. I know they've been around for a while, but in, in, in the world of car companies, they're still uh, pretty new. Yep. TikTok's Hype House is getting its own Netflix reality show. Oh, boy. Now, I realize that Jack has been on the show for, I don't know, a few topics here, six, seven topics. But really, this is where I expect Jack to take over. Right. Really, it's at moments like this where I am glad that we got to tra travel down this complex path and we got a navigator like Jack with us. Oh, boy. Jack's thoughts. TikTok's Listen. biggest creators are headed to Netflix. Break it down, Jack. Well, naturally, that's the next step, right? Netflix, reality show. I mean, everyone's getting one of those, right? But um, I don't know. Listen, don't get your, too excited here. I don't really know who any of these people are. Uh, actually, the person on the left kind of looks familiar. Yeah, or, that's... I can't remember his name, uh, but he's the one who's accused of, of being like David Dobrik. What is his name? We should get it here. It is... I have it here somewhere, don't I? Alex Warren. Mm -hmm. Alex Warren. I can I can tell you who all these, uh, who everyone here is. You know Co them. Coover, oh. Annan, Nikita Dragon, Sienna May Gomez, Chase Hudson, La, uh, Larry Merritt, Larry Merritt, Thomas Petru, Alex Warren, and Jack Wright. Some of the largest creators on TikTok, each with millions of followers, and promises the stories of the most popular personalities on social media as they come into their own, fall in love, and tackle the next stage of their lives. Jack, are you tuning in or what? I'll be there. You're there. It, it, I feel like they're all breaking down the fourth wall here. Like, and I feel like the Jake Paul thing is a good example of that, where he's really showing that all you need is a big following, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. Mm. If you have enough followers, you can do whatever you want. And you can knock people out. You can knock people out. Oh, and yeah. um, it's pretty, you know, it is kind of exciting to watch because these are just regular people that, um, you know, they really have an opportunity to just kind of fulfill whatever dreams they have. But then it's up to them to actually, like, follow through with it and be successful at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the door is open for them, and it's exciting times. Does that conclude your breakdown? That's all I got. <laughs> I'm surprised they had that much. Uh, yeah, it, it, look, it's. Uh, I think you have you have almost happening in on the internet. You have almost like what's turning out to be traditional internet media. Like Netflix feels old compared to TikTok, mm -hmm. and so Netflix reaches to TikTok in order to bring the next generation into Netflix. That's how long Netflix has been around, mm -hmm. and so they need these type of collabs to continue that inflow of subscribership yep and this is a way to do it you go go reach to this group that may not currently have a netflix subscription i mean we talk about netflix a lot on this show it's crazy to think how long we've had we've been watching netflix for at this point i mean because i'll i'll tell you about actually ordering the dvds in the mail from netflix mm. that's how long i've been a netflix member netflix 1.0 you got to return the in the envelope that's wild did yeah. you you not you didn't have Netflix I, at that no, point? Not at that point, no. Yeah. Anyway, this is kind of like the real world, but oh, all these yeah. all these people everyone knows. Like, MTV's uh, real world. Yeah. Yeah, they live together in the house. Because back in the day, these were would have been strangers. 
and we would have learned their personalities throughout the show, but now we know them mm. going into it. Mm. So everyone has like a team. Well, you don't know them, Jack. Let's not get carried well, away here. Personally, but but uh, you will once you tune in. Yeah. And 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 once you tune in and you find out about the stories of the most popular personalities on social media as they come into their own. That's the part. You need to be there for that. Remember when you were coming into your own? Fall in love and tackle the next stage of their lives. This is where you need to be on a, on a weeknight. <laughs> <laughs> they got their whole lives ahead of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Endless possibilities. <laughs> Bright faces. <laughs> How many of them wind up as... Uh, Easy, easy, geez. Uh, no, Sorry. we're not suggesting Sorry. such a I, thing. I, I, On a show like this, we wouldn't suggest such a no, thing. No. David Dobrik is facing backlash again after we catch a glimpse at the failed stunt, which showed Jeff Wittick getting his face busted on uh, being swung around. On did, First of all, who's seen this? Did you guys see this? I heard about it. haven't seen it. Yeah, same here. Okay, so he put out a video... Damn, I guess months in the making because this thing happened a long time ago. It led to the stoppage of Dobrik's vlogs, is my understanding, and the footage been sitting there. And then you had the whole separate controversy, which maybe delayed things further. But And then you had the physical injury. So Jeff Wittick uh, had this eye patch, and he had a busted eye, and nobody knew what the reason for it was. Mm. Now he's releasing content, which is going into the story of what went down. And I guess the episode, the most recent episode, which is up there on trending, is uh, showcasing the accident that took place. And people are being harsh to Dobrik because he was dry, He was the driver. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a clip where he's got like one hand on the excavator and one on his camera. And he's swinging. It. <laughs> and it's like a two-foot lake. And you're sitting there thinking, you're doing the calculations? You know, yeah, be uh, beautiful mind style, you're doing the calculations, and you're like, can't really work out over here. This can't really work out. So anyway, I think you can play a little bit of the clip. I don't know if it's embedded in this article. Oh, you got to go to YouTube because it's age restricted. It's just, yeah, I mean, I don't know what portion of it's age restricted. He, he, I think there's maybe some profanity in there as well. So, but you can just fast forward. Oh, oh, you're not signed in. Wow. Riveting Go stuff. Willie do, Willie do signs into Google. I'd watch that channel all day long. <laughs> Holy cow. They really want to make sure that you're ready for what you're about to see. You can skip to the three-quarter mark. Okay. And no three-quarter. Yeah, more around here. More, 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 more. More. More, more. Uh, now you're in the right neighborhood. So you can see this is the this is the idea. Oh, excavator in about two feet of water and swing some people around. Now, at this point, it seems like, all right, well, they're on the water. At least they're not airborne. And they are they got wakeboards and whatnot spinning around. But then it escalates to people kind of climbing the rope a little bit and getting swung around that way. And so here is the moment. And uh, it starts... This is, oh, Jack's already worried. Now she survives, but she yells at him like, hey, man, you almost, she's screaming to get off. The next guy, not so much. This is when Jeff grabs on and he begins to spin over here. And uh, you can see the disaster that's about to take place when you, when you witness the amount oh, of air. That's, and, uh, that's and, a big swing. And you realize it can't end well because that rope has to come back towards. Okay, you can pause it. That's we can't do the whole thing. So, oh. It, oh. I mean, he edited in such a way that you don't really see the impact. But if you've ever like swung a ball, yeah. uh, you know exactly what happens. Yeah. If you once the speed, once you let the speed go, it comes back in. Mm -hmm. You would either have to slow down very gradually. Yeah. Yeah impossible and to be you know you're not an excavator yeah, expert so yeah. anyway so jack you go ahead i was just gonna say these guys they live in a fantasy world right like their whole lives are lived through these screens and these little videos and they they, they forget that there's a whole reality out there of like things like this actually yeah. happening people can die yeah and you know wow you're very upset jack's going for the juggler here 
I think it's, I'm going to, I'm not going to defend it, but I'm going to say sometimes you get caught up. What happens is, you know, you're about to have a viral clip and, and, and it, it almost acts like every, everybody is on some sort of a high collectively. Like you won't, it's like, if you've ever been in a circumstance where you're with a group of guys, it's like, you won't do it. You won't, For you've sure. seen it, man. You've seen it time and time again. And when you were with that group of guys, when you were younger, there were no cameras on. You didn't have the added element of, oh, millions of people are going to see this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it's a good idea. It's obviously a disaster. The guy's lucky to be alive is what I'm going to go out and say because he came and smacked straight into the arm on that excavator, which is steel with great velocity. He actually broke with a his face. His face. He broke a portion cool. of his skull. And he's lucky to have the eyeball. And it's all, it's, it's serious, a serious thing. And I think that what this, for me, the way I look at this and the, the, the word I would put out on it is the responsibility that exists with the viewer. That when you're on here watching stuff, like if this ended up in one of his vlogs, it would have been like a 20 second thing. Like we're so crazy. Whoa. Isn't that like, look at our lives. And then meanwhile, you see it from the other side and you start to think about the behind the scenes and you start to think about the risks that are being taken. And here we have one example, but you don't know how many times it was close mm -hmm. and never ended up public. How many other risks were taken along the way and who, 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 who was the most likely to suffer from those risks? Yeah. So, so as a viewer, you have... I think you got to try to see through the fabrication, whether you're watching a vlog, a fancy vlog, an edited piece of content, a family vlog, things being presented in a certain way, only showing you a glimpse into the process that it took to get there. That if you want to know the reality of the situation, you have to imagine all the pieces that it took to get there. And the same goes for this right here, because if he doesn't smack his face, we never see this. It yeah. ends up as a 20-second fun clip, like the greatest yeah. time ever. Mm -hmm. But he does smack his face, and everyone goes, oh, damn, what were we watching? Yeah. Reality check. Like, like that would have been a manslaughter charge. Yeah. If, if his head explodes when he hits, if he has a little bit more velocity, you have a manslaughter charge. Mm -hmm. or, or just... Or something like it. Paralyzed. Sure. You know? Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it reminds me of when Jackass first came out and you had all those copycats of those kids going out and doing those stunts. But you kind of forget that there's a, there's a level of professionalism that comes to doing these stunts. And it takes coordination, it takes understanding of things like velocity and all these things to like pull it off. Well, just step one, just you're making millions of dollars. Just get a, an excavator driver. Right. Just get a guy who basically knows yeah. if I swing him like that, here's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. or I can't swing swing him that fast. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Or here's a release latch on the rope. If you start swinging in towards the thing, you can at least release and land in the water. I know it was only like two feet of water, but these are the type of things. You'll even hear Rogan talk about to this day about Fear Factor taking risks, and they had the professionals on, on set. Mm -hmm. They had the paramedics. They had everything uh, necessary, but it's a bit of a wake-up call for YouTube in general, as it has uh, increasingly become professional from the standpoint of advertisers, from the standpoint of all these things. And then now it's not, it's not like you can't go out and, and do crazy things. And it ultimately is up to you. Ultimately, he chose to jump on the thing, but uh, there's definitely a way to do it. You want to do crazy stunts, there's a way to do it to at least limit risk. But even in, in Jackass, even they had crews and people still got injured. It's a sure. risky business. This type of content is a risky business. And, and 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 to be fair, it's a lot of risky businesses. You you mentioned Jake Paul. I mean, getting punched in the head is a risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a question. Did you really know what you were signing up for? Mm -hmm. You know, are you fully on board with the risk you're about to take? Like, I don't think he had any idea that he was going to fling him like that. I think he probably thought he's going to go slow like he did for the, the girl before. Yep. And just give him a quick little spin. But obviously that escalated quickly. You got so. wrapped up in the click. We'll it? see. It's gonna it's gonna be a series of videos, so you'll see how it all 
unwinds. But in the meantime, Dobrik is taking even more heat for having been a driver on that. Mm. Tough couple of months for him, eh? Um, he's kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, do you guys know about this thing with the gender reveal parties? Yeah. Spe yeah. Speaking about how uh, things can get out of hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. These are so ridiculous. Like, I just have to say off the top, like, they're just... The, the amount of injuries that come through these are, are insane. And it seems like such an odd combination. Like, here you have this joyous moment. Yeah. And then all these injuries. And, and all these problems. Well, anyway, this one kind of uh, struck me because the blast that went off was a, was actually the result of, an, of 80 pounds of explosives. <laughs> what happened to hitting the golf ball? That, that explosion. I think you could into, probably get injured with that anyway. Yeah. But eighty pounds of explosives, eighty pounds. Why would you be like have those explosives near someone who's pregnant? No, they weren't. There was distance, but it was so much explosive that all the houses nearby shook. Eighty pounds of explosives is massive. People were calling into the emergency line saying that a bomb went off. Uh, people were claiming the foundation of their house had taken damage from this explosion uh the you can scroll down there's a clip a video clip play just i don't you don't have to play much you just have to watch the boom it's looking out the front door and the, do you see the the cracks in the foundation oh i was expecting like a really rich community like these were a bunch of rich people and a ton of land it, this doesn't no 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 that's not that's not what was going on you got to just wait, and uh, I don't know if we, we don't have audio, but you got to get some desktop audio so we can hear audio. on your mixer. I think you got to up the fader. So you can hear it in the background. Like this, per this, this person is far away from the explosion, but... It was uh, the shock waves raveled, uh, rattled properties in a 20 mile radius. 20 mile radius that you felt this thing. <laughs> it knocked pictures off people's walls. <laughs> Many residents and neighbors reported cracks in the foundations of their home. Kingston Fire Chief Graham Pellerin said the fire department had responded to one report of a crack foundation. Authorities are currently investigating other reports. Apparently, they had permission to do this at a local quarry, but they interviewed multiple people that were not happy about it. Hmm. Sounded like a big boom. I don't know. I just, I just thought these things were strange in the first place. Yeah. Obviously, this one took it to another level. There have been situations where people died off these things, mm -hmm. off these uh, explosive devices. Look at this poor woman has like a bandage <laughs> on her nose. <laughs> I don't actually think that that bandage is related, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's not a good look. This is very uh, you know American to have like the you know the big explosions and uh, talking about the Super Bowl, loud yeah, like and proud, flexing your your gunpowder uh, muscle yeah well explosions can be fun i mean fireworks it's it's kind of like the last story he just gotta recognize uh the risk and 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 do it in a in a safe way oh what is that a crash plane trying to do the same thing last month two pilots were releasing a sign in the sky for a reveal and they were killed they crashed into the sea just off cancun mexico what yeah, happened too to, much. to cutting into the cake and seeing the ice, the color icing? Honestly, I have many kids. I never done any of this stuff. You know, There's no gunpowder. No, I never sliced any cakes. No I never, you know. We had a big explosion. I have to say, you did. No, like oh. a, <laughs> but did you have it? Did you do this? There was thing? a cake. There, there was a cake. How does the cake work? You cut into it, and and if it's blue icing, it's a boy, and if it's pink icing, it's a girl. So who knows that what the what's in the cake? Uh, the person making the cake kind of got the intel before, like, hey, this is. So who doesn't know then? Everyone else at the party. Yeah. The baker. But you know. Yeah, we know, and then, uh, in this case, my mom knew, and she made the cake. 
Oh, okay. And then everyone else at the party kind of learned. Uh, yeah. It's for the it. people. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. Very exciting. Wild times. Yeah. So, yeah, cake seems safer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Less, less, less broken less windows. Explosive. Wait yeah. a second. Did you blow up the cake? <laughs> it did blow up. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Eighty pounds of explosives. Yeah. Yeah. This one type of soda may increase liver cancer risk. New study shows. Anyone want to take a guess? Oh, never mind. You can see it in the sub sub line there. Convinced zero sugar or calories make this soda safe. It's the diet stuff. Hmm. So they, uh, and they're not certain. I mean, it's one of these things, an early study. Meta-analysis of 38 previous studies is published in March issue of Public Health Nutrition. Two researchers, I see a PhD over there, Korea's National Cancer Center, connected the risk of gastrointestinal cancers, cancer of the colon, stomach, esophagus, pancreas, and liver. Sub-analysis on specific types of cancer showed that soda with artificial sweeteners raised the risk of liver cancer by 28%. Artificial sweeteners like aspartame, saccharin, sucralose, neotame, and acyl. Don't those sound very, uh, yeah. don't those sound just so uh, natural, enticing and, yeah. for you there? Straight from the earth. <laughs> Were you guys ever into diet uh, drinks? No, never. No. You? There was a moment I liked Diet Coke. Well, it's supposed to be somewhat addictive, right? It says yeah. over here... Uh, uh, let's see here. It aspartame blocks an important gut enzyme that can prevent obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. The feature of the artificial sweetener and others like it is proof that zero sugar sodas aren't great for your body per se. So it's weird that they, they kind of can have the alternative effect. Yeah. On yeah. people. <laughs> not even. It is kind of crazy. You can call it diet soda. Yeah. Like you're on a diet. I think it's because the alternative, the real Coke, is just so filled with sugar. You can sell the other one as the diet. Yeah. Hmm. I know Coke has a new one with Stevia, right? The green one? I don't know what that one's called. They're always looking for that next sweetener. Mm -hmm. I mean, they made a couple of bucks selling people things that are sweet. Yeah. And they're looking for the magical sweetener, but I don't know if it exists. They should just go back to their original recipe. They have that still. No, no, the original one. Oh, cane sugar. No, before that. Wasn't there like um like a like a drug in there? Oh yeah, cocaine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Just I'm not sure what that's that gonna one. solve, Jack. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that might solve everyone's problem. Yeah, At least exactly. you don't get cancer. Jack from said it, I didn't. Yeah. Who knows, you might. Time. Yeah, Coca-Cola Coca Life, they were trying, to, trying uh, Stevia. Cane sugar, I'll tell you something else about Coca-Cola. If you've ever traveled to Mexico or those areas, you get the cane sugar Coca-Cola. It's more accessible over there, mm. and uh, it tastes better. Mm -hmm. So everyone, everyone knows too. about the Mexican Coke. You can, you, can, you can find it pretty much anywhere. You can find it around here, too, but it's a, quite an experience with the, yeah, the mini glass bottle mm -hmm. and the loveliness of cane sugar. I'm gonna go have me one of those. Yeah, a Coke around Christmas. Oh time. man! Well, they did. They, they do. They always do the Christmas advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus is involved, and in, or polar bears polar, are involved. Yeah, polar bear. Yeah, polar and bear. Santa. They took over all the Christmas. They got all of it. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it. That's it for me. It's time to hand over the reins. Uh, it's time for the big, biggest moment of the show. This is Jack's moment to shine. It was a part of the agreement for him to sit in that chair today. That uh, we would. That he would get his story in there. Uh, he owns the wild card today. Take it away, Jack. Yeah. Okay. Well, since I'm such a uh, you know saving the earth kind of guy, and uh, you know the environment is so important to me, and uh, I'm willing to take half hour extra long trips. <laughs> um, anyway, this kind of came from watching the Sea Spiracy documentary. I'm sure you guys heard about it. it oh was, yeah popular for a while there and it was very devastating to watch and regardless of how much they you know um you know every documentary has a bias but it, it was very kind of the, the reality was quite uh, tragic so uh this kind of led me down this path of kind of looking at these kind of things that were going on to kind of help swing that a little bit and you know the oceans are, are really becoming a desolate place and on top of that they're also becoming these just garbage wasteland so 
I just figured I'd pick an article that kind of has a tech side of it. And um, uh, so anyway, my, Microsoft teamed up with this um, company. Um, what's this company called again? Ocean. Um, Ocean Cleanup. Yeah, the Ocean Cleanup. Uh, um, to kind of be able to um, automatically, uh, you know, understand what they're taking out of the water. So before it was a uh, human process where they would have to actually like look at pictures of all this stuff that they were dragging out of the water and and um, categorize it because it's not they can't just take it out and put it into a landfill on on you know land they have to actually put it somewhere to make it all worthwhile. So um, Microsoft teamed up with them to kind of automatically do that, and they can kind of um, you know see what they're taking out. They can make sure that they put back things that are meant to be in the ocean and take out things that aren't and um, and then categorize it from there. Um, but they're also, um, you know, doing it in a way where they're 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 doing it from these um, the mouth of these rivers that lead into the ocean. So before it even gets into the ocean, they're kind of um, intercepting it. And um, so I was just I was just uh, as you were saying that I was just looking at the article there. It looks like they have an actual physical device. Yes, an autonomous catcher that's uh, moving about on his own in search of deadly plastics. Yeah, yeah. It kind of sits there and it filters things uh, through it, and uh, it picks up things that aren't supposed to be there. And um, yeah, it's picking up like tons and tons of stuff every day. And there's a bunch of these all over the place. And um, yeah, anyway, and then the, the tech element is Microsoft came in and reached out to these guys and um, offered to kind of create this synonymous thing where they can kind of filter it automatically without um, somebody actually sitting there and having to do that. Yeah, and then some of these, by the way, that picture is in Jakarta. That's Interceptor 001. It looks like it's their first unit. It looks like it has solar panels on top. Yeah. Uh, they can take some of these items and actually repurpose them. Yeah. So turn them into, I know Adidas does a ton turning bottles from the ocean into sneakers, the Parley stuff. Yeah. They, they have to be accountable for everything that they take out. They can't just throw it into a, a garbage dump. They have to somehow repurpose it. So the um, interceptor, that's a cool, actually that looks cool. That's a cool name too. Mm -hmm. Interceptor. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be intercepted by that, but yeah, for, it, it's pretty cool. And they have these like big, like yacht size ones out in the ocean that are actually being fueled by the, the plastic that they're picking up. Just throw it back in there. Yeah. And it's, and it's moving these ships throughout the ocean. I mean, you try to imagine engineering something like that, that also wouldn't be doing damage to the environmental situation. Like it's scraping along. You imagine fish and right. uh, crabs and whatever else as it as it's uh, grabbing. It would be it would be really hard to figure out how you get your fins and whatnot in there to avoid picking up the animal life. I mean, I'm sure they've done it. Yeah, I'm sure they figured out what, what kind of a system. You see the conveyor going up that it can attack certain items and not others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think doing this at the mouth of these rivers before it gets into the ocean is key where you're not kind of, you know, intermingling with all this ocean um, uh, creatures and stuff. You're kind of getting it at, at its source before it gets out there. And a lot of this stuff is close to the surface too. It doesn't sit on the ocean floor. But um, yeah, it's crazy. 11,000 pounds of debris in a day. Yeah. More than 11,000 pounds of and debris in a day. that's just one ship? Uh, a single, a single interceptor. interceptor, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. The future. It, it's a it's a ray of light in an otherwise kind of um, dim reality that is. Uh, so now that so now that we got these, we can get our straws back, right, Jack? That's right. <laughs> well, if you if you watch the documentary, they actually go into that and talk about how the the whole straws thing was kind of this um, facade for yeah. covering up the reality of what's really going on. And, um, do you want to add more to that? What do you mean? Well, they just created a, it was kind of like back in the day when all these big companies put the onus on people to recycle. Remember like back in the eighties and nineties, there was the reduced, reduced yeah, yeah, recycle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that was a way of putting the responsibility on the consumer to, correct. you know, and really it just allowed these big companies to keep producing all this plastic and all this, you know, uh, non combustible stuff. So, um, that, that's kind of the same story with the straws where, 
they kind of created the story that the straws because there was that one picture of that turtle, turtle. Yes. and it kind of you know that hit the heartstrings of everybody and that's how you get people's attention so but the reality is that's the least of everyone's problems and, yeah it's uh, a very small percentage yeah of straws in the ocean uh-huh so um and the real issue is like the commercial fishing and stuff like that because that uh, speaking of like scraping the bottom of the the floor they were saying that like you know one out of every six uh fish that they kind of scrape up in these massive nets end up actually being used as human consumption the rest of them aren't being sold anywhere so they just end up dying or being thrown away so they're just really like just you know purging our oceans of all of its uh wildlife and um and just discarding the plastic nets exactly into the ocean yeah. the, and they were saying that's one of the biggest uh, contributors of, of plastic in the ocean is these commercial fishing nets because mm -hmm. the net itself gets discarded in there yeah oh, i see okay discarding yeah. them and uh and they're massive they're just just, just massive all right. Well, I'm going to go cry now. So yeah. thanks for that, Jack. Yeah, no problem, guys. All right. All right.